Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And this week, leading into Christmas, we wanted to do a special show and talk about a few of the potential pitfalls in buying precious metals and how to avoid them. Yeah, we'd like to go into just five for the sake of this show. There are many more, unfortunately, in this industry. But I want to start with one, which is paying high premiums for newly minted products. I mean, guys, are we seeing this occur left and right now in this industry? Absolutely. You often see different quote unquote commemorative coins coming out where you're looking at a coin that's really only worth its melt value in the metal it's made out of. But a lot of dealers will sell those because they look different or pretty or whatever at pretty substantial premiums. Well, that to me is one of the primary motivations. Miles is the substantial premium because they can declare a coin because they have an exclusive right to sell it. They can declare it to be of any value they desire. So this just happened to a client of mine here in the last six weeks in an IRA. We had placed 25 100-ounce silver bars in her IRA account, and at the time it was valued at $42,600. So this other company comes along and says, you don't want to hold bars in your IRA, you need coins. And they sold her, they swapped her into 918 1.5-ounce Canadian Maple Leaf Gray Falcons. (laughs) Wow. So she went from 2,500 ounces to, what did you say? 1,377 ounces because they were one and a half ounce coins. Oh man. So that's a 45% decrease in ounces. Now, part of the strategy in ratio trading and premium swapping is always ounce accumulation. That's the objective. So not only did they decrease her ounces by 45%, the value of her IRA dropped from 42,600 to 23,600 because they charged her $31 per ounce for this bullion product to your point miles. That's terrible. I mean, that, that just is bad. That's bad practice. Um, and unfortunately there are people who are out there doing that because this is an unregulated industry. No, you're right, Robert. And before we transition to point number two, I do want you to know that we did encourage her to go back and demand that that company replace her bars in our IRA. And they did do that. So all's well that ends well. And what you're going to see in today's show is a running theme of don't go it alone. There's something to be said for education and working with people who know what they're doing in this industry. Before we jump to the point number two, I think the main problem with some of these commemorative coins is that the bid side, the price that you can get for them when you bring them back to the market. Yes, this wolf or this unicorn coin might sound great. It might look great. I'm kind of a sucker sometimes for things like that, but I might buy one, not a lot of them, because I know that when I bring it back to the market, which buying one, I'm not gonna bring it back to the market. I'm just gonna hold on to it forever and pass it on to my kid and they'll enjoy it. But if you bring it back to the market, you're gonna get hosed. And that's because it's only worth the bullion spot price. Correct. It will take decades for it to truly become a collectible. Right. It's like buying a brand new Ford Mustang and painting it a nice special sparkly color. color. It doesn't have collectible value just because you painted it nicely. So you'd say age and scarcity. Has to be. Have to have those two things to make something truly a collectible where you would want to pay a premium for something. Don't pay a premium for something that's worth the melt value. That's right. And only when the premium is your friend. It's to your advantage to pursue the premium. All right, what's the second point? Jumping to point number two, personally storing your IRA metals. Boy, this has become something in our industry that is just... Rampant. I don't even know what adjective to use. But what the point is, is that you don't want to do these types of things. So to clarify, Robert, you're talking specifically about holding IRA assets, IRA metals within your own home. Correct. Or even, I think some companies are advocating storing them abroad in your IRA. So, because I've had so many questions with this, I actually went to RITA, the Retirement Industry Trust Association, and I emailed their executive director, and she got back to me and said, Robert, our trade organization does not advocate any home storage IRAs. The Internal Revenue Code clearly mandates that IRA assets be held by a bona fide custodian, which is a bank or trust company domiciled in the USA, period. That's from the Retirement Industry Trust Association Executive Director. I don't know how much clearer you can be on this topic. I think you had even heard that the IRS had on their website information about 
this exact thing. So if you want to go down this path with a company who doesn't know what they're talking about and they're doing all these different things within their IRAs and they're playing these games, you're playing games with your retirement assets. The IRS is not going to look kindly on you if they see that you're doing that, especially when they have information on their page clearly presented to you. Well, and the primary motivation that these companies have is to swap your product so that they get a commission on the new product that you decide to take possession of at home. So we've already heard nightmare stories of people having early withdrawal penalties and taxable events and interest charges because of those early distributions and non-reported distributions out of the retirement account. Here's the thing about this is that people don't want to trust someone else to hold their assets, right? I think that's that's the bottom line. Of this. I get it. I get it. You get that, right? You don't want to have to trust anyone in this environment. Because on a Monday morning, the head of Lehman Brothers is telling us their bank is okay, their clients stay in. By Thursday afternoon, they're filing bankruptcy and their clients don't have money. Okay, so we get that. We get the the idea that you don't want to trust an organization to hold your IRA assets. Well, some of you out there who are listening have IRA assets that are in a mutual fund or with a stockbroker or with a company. You don't hold those assets either. But you think that they're safer being invested in the financial markets? No. If you're going to leave your money in an IRA, the best thing you can do is get it out of the financial system. And the best thing, best way to do that is to own precious metals in an IRA. But if you take the step of taking possession of that and you screw that up in some way, then the IRS is going to charge you penalties, taxes, fees, interest. because it's going to be a distribution. Interest. And go look at the interest rate that they charge you. It's like 5% a month. So you don't want to do this with your retirement assets. Robert, that's a great point. The takeaway is it's very clear that within retirement accounts, you have to hold your assets with an approved company. And you have to work with a broker dealer that understands and knows how to work with those approved companies. There's your running theme right there, a broker dealer who actually knows what they're doing. Because a lot of these companies who are doing this and advocating it and putting people through this they're brand new. They haven't been here since 1972 like we have, but we they haven't pioneered this industry. We were opening the very first precious metals accounts in 1986 when the government allowed this. We would love to do this with our clients. If we felt that this was right and we were allowed to do this, we would do it. We would be advocating for that. We would be doing it ourselves. But we've run this up the flagpole a number of times because I would love to do that. I'd love to offer that to my clients. And we've been repeatedly been told no for exactly the same reasons that the Retirement Industry Trust Association points out. Has to be held by a bona fide trust or bank in the USA. So whether you're buying something at home for storage or within an IRA, you want to make sure you're not buying dead end physical metal product. You don't want to be buying into the metals industry based on the hype of a coin or the flashiness of a bar. And this is something you've heard as a theme in our podcast since we started invest in metals with a very proven specific strategy to increase ounces over time and increase net worth over time as well. That's right. So buying into a product at a, high premium, where it essentially has nowhere to go but down and move against you, buying into a product that is overvalued, and thus the ratio is askew, and being on the wrong side of the fence in a ratio strategy are two examples of exactly that. Your metals don't have to sit in a shoebox in the closet, so don't feel that you have to approach it as buy and hold forever. There are strategic ways, as Miles just pointed out, to accumulate ounces. Don't put yourself into a dead end right off the bat. Speak with an advisor and make sure that you are set up for future strategic gains and an ability to compound ounces. Well, and this is a great segue to our fourth point as well. Allowing a precious metals advisor to swap your product without showing you the math. Boy, that's a bad idea. Very bad idea. That's a recipe for disaster. You losing ounces, you losing nominal value, and you being put into something that you cannot recover from. I think the main point of this point number four is showing you the math because there are swap strategies. There are reasons why you would want to do an exchange out of something that you have into something else. But if you don't get shown the math to show the increase of 
either your nominal value increasing or your ounces, total ounces increasing, or if you're moving to a better product, if there aren't reasons for it, if you're just trusting the guy on the other end of the phone who says, oh no, you shouldn't own that, you've got to own this, not a good idea. Look at the reasons why you would want to do that. And you have to be able to justify the reasons why, and you have to be able to look for an end goal of what you want to accomplish. So it kind of brings it back to point number three of buying an only dead end physical metal product is that you can get into a dead end metal product and not be able to do anything with it. You're in a dead end. You have to turn around and go back the other way, which typically you end up with losses. So in terms of doing this math, and we're going to move on to the final point here, but always seek at least a nominal value gain or an ounce gain. One of those two has to be true. You may temporarily have a nominal value decrease in a swap. That's okay if you are accumulating ounces. In fact, since the late 90s, between gold and silver, we've had seven and a half round trips. Three of those seven and a half round trips, you were at least doubling your ounce position but actually taking a dollar value loss. So ultimately you can see substantial gain over time, even if you might lose a few dollars in a single transaction, because you're going from 2000 ounces of silver to 4,000 ounces of silver at no cost. And you have a beneficial loss to carry forward. So what's point number five? So point number five is the running theme through all of this, and that's going it alone. Unfortunately, a very common mistake. Self-education is still important, right? We do want you getting educated and doing your homework, doing your research. That being said, take it one step further and find a trusted advisor. On this point, I think there are people out there who are not necessarily in their mind going about this all alone. They're using all these resources and then they're going to an online retailer and trying to make sense of what they need to buy or what they do. I think they're, they, in their mind, they're not doing it alone. They're, they're gathering information or what have you, but then they're never actually engaging with someone and working with someone. We partner with our clients for a reason. It's a partnership. By buying online, you're dealing with an online retailer. Well, you're also giving online your information to their computer system, which a few of these online retailers, if you didn't know, have actually been hacked recently. So your information, your address, what you bought from them, all this other information, somebody has just hacked into and they know where your metals were shipped and what you own. So do you want that out there on the internet? I don't. So working with someone who guards your information and protects you as a partnership and gives you sound advice That's what we're telling you to do. Don't just try to gather information and go out there on an online retailer and try to do it yourself. You are going to see value in working with legitimate people. So the key to avoiding these pitfalls and making sure you're not going it alone is to work with somebody, a trusted advisor with expertise who shares your worldview and is working within a strategy from the beginning and through the entire process to make sure you achieve your financial goals. So those are five of the pitfalls and there are definitely more. And we could even elaborate extensively on our experiences with these five, as well as the other ones. Some of you out there may have experienced some of these pitfalls and may have suggestions or comments or questions. We invite you to call us, engage with us, Talk to us, email us. We will do a portfolio analysis with you. We will talk about each item, what you can do with each, where you need to go and have a strategy. We can employ that for you. And so give us a call. We appreciate you listening. We're going to wrap it up this week. Please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below. And you can also follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. That number to call is 800-525-9556. So on behalf of Miles and Robert, this is Tori signing off of Golden Rule Radio. Thanks for listening and have a good week.